Welcome to our Isar Turkey channel. Today I have a very, very precious uh, guest with me, Anna Andrade. So I want to say welcome to her. Welcome, dear Anna. Hello, guys. Nice to nice to meet you. Nice to have this invitation and at uh, welcome to everybody to this little presentation that we will make. I'm so happy to share with you this uh, topic that you will announce it. <laughs> yeah, there is a wonderful topic that uh, Anna prepared for us. Uh, she has so so innovative ideas. I love her works in general. Uh, she has many hypotheses, let's say. So that type of innovative mind and works. Anna Andrade, everyone knows her, but she is a Peruvian astrologer. She studied in the Fundación Centro Astrológico de Buenos Aires, I guess you pronounce something like that, in Argentina. Anna is a published author and co-author in many publications in US magazines such as ISAR, NCGR, and FAA. Anna participated as an international speaker in UK, India, in UAC 2018 in Chicago, and in Turkey. So it's such a, such a pleasure to have her here. And then we are looking forward to hear you. Yes. Thank you, Gaia. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Greetings from Lima, Peru. I am very pleased to share with you the topic of asteroids, a topic that is very interesting and many things don't dare to explore. In this 20 minutes, 20 to half an hour time, we will explore asteroids, not only the typical ones, the typical big fours, but also other kind of asteroids that maybe you won't think that they will work, but they really do. I would like to share with you this presentation. Please follow me. I would like to share the, the PPT. We will have the fascinating asteroids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see it again? Yes, it's perfect. Yes. Okay. You can start. Okay, this, this is my presentation, the full one, but we can skip it. Okay, so in these minutes we will have uh, three three parts about the, the typical asteroids, the, the asteroids are general view. Then we will see about the, the big four asteroids that are very known, but in an example, a very particular example, and other asteroids. So let's start about the asteroids. Asteroids are these rocky objects that are uh, between, mostly of them, between the Mars and Jupiter. They were supposed to be part of a planet that was destroyed, and another side of the, the theory says that no, they were a bunch or a, a myriad of rocky objects that they couldn't become a planet. But anyway, what we'll focus is on those uh, celestial bodies that are between Mars and Jupiter uh, practically all the time. So its orbit is around four years, four, five, three years, but this is the typical, the average of years around the sun. Okay, at the beginning, the asteroids were discovered in the early 18s, and then uh, they have uh, named after feminine goddesses, and then when the time passes by, they were, they named, the asteroids were named after name of cities, countries, people, people that were famous in different fields. So uh, we have a, now, uh, I think there are around 22,000 asteroids now. Mm -hmm. So we can have a lot of fun <laughs> for many years. So uh, there are many classification of asteroids, but for our purposes, we will say that we have these symbolic asteroids, those that are named after certain goddesses of certain mythologies. So we can explore a little bit with the archetypes. And those that are literal ones that we won't have, we won't find any meaning in books because we have to add our own interpretation. The list of asteroids can be seen in astro.com. Uh, we will show you in the screen how to get there. And their synchronicity is amazing. I think that is one of the, the most stunning thing about working with asteroids. You can see if you go to astro.com, you have to choose extended charts. And below you will find the classification of all the asteroids with, uh, with the capital letter. So you can pick, pick the, the, the ones you want and they, they will immediately go 
uh, to be casted in your chart. Hmm? So, sorry. The typical big four asteroids about Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta. And I think that they, we don't have to go deeper with, with them because I think there's a lot of literature about what they mean, uh, how they work, etc. So, but I wanted to put here because I call, I call it the big four, uh, because in that order they, they were the discovered and they are very well known. How, how they, they work and they how uh, they uh, are they participate and provide information in the chart. Now we will have those uh, the the big four keywords. The typical one is series talking about the archetype of the mother that has the unconditional unconditional nourishment, the nurturing side, the food, physical or spiritual one, the abundance, the protection. Uh, Palace has to do with the strategic strategic thinking has to be with the archetype of the daughter coming from the head of seals or Jupiter, the sense of justice, the goal orientation, etc. You know, the Jupiter's wife has to do with marriage, commitment, the quality in partnership, the jealousy as well. And Vesta, the sister of Jupiter, has to do with meditation, the sacralization, devotion. Okay, so we have a lot of literature and I don't want to stop in this, but I would like to share with you an example of this asteroid working in a male chart because it's typically it's, 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 uh, known that these asteroids work very well in female charts, but it also does in male charts. So I bring you an example for you to share. And this is something of Hugh Hefner. We all know who he was. You know, is uh, Hugh Hefner, uh, the founder of Playboy. Uh, well, he also experienced his life with the, the asteroids. So we have his chart here and we won't focus on the planets. We will focus only on the asteroids that are is, uh, circling this orange ellipse. So we will see that, for example, his series in Leo in House 11 will talk about how he feels about his project, how he nurtured his projects, how he made a living. So it's in Leo, and in 11th house, it means that he will fit by himself. So he became an entrepreneur and a huge one. And a huge one, uh, he became uh, an entrepreneur and leader in his work and he believed in himself. And of course, in the house 11, that has to do with project and future. And, on, and not only that, because it's the, the 11th house is the house of Uranus. So it means that he created a new perspective. He saw what others didn't see and he moved forward to that. And then we have in the, in the mid heaven, which is the house related to war and the, the, the public image, we have Vesta and we have palace together in Cancer in the house then. So he projected not only his Stalinian and strategic thinking, but also he liked to work in his house. The Playboy mansion, uh, mansion is known uh, all the party time, the world party with all women practically naked, having fun with a lot of uh, people. Uh, it was very known for that. And the other side is, uh, and Palace, of course, he, uh, he liked to, he was very intelligent about topics about cancer, it has to do with women, have to do with his inner emotion as well. And also we have uh, the, last, the, the last asteroid is Juno. Uh, in Aquarius, in the fifth house, and this, uh, besides Jupiter, who is the was the husband of Juno, so uh, so but in Aquarius, so he had a lot of fun with many lovers. He had three wives, but now it's common to have three wives. But uh, uh, but he had a tons of women and lovers, and sim in simultaneously relationships. So he was famous for for that. But he wore himself. So let's have a look about his life in these following graphs. So we can see Sirius in Leo in House 11. Well, Sirius, Sirius in the chart was very close to Neptune. So all this photograph, the cover magazine, the search of things were together. So he wanted to nurture his projects with a, a glamorous, a, in a fancy way. He also created all the brands that has to do with the Playboy, Playboy uh, Club 
so with the cafes, Playboy cafes, and uh, you can see how he used to work. We also have, a, uh, let me check if we can move it. We also have here Vesta in Cancer. See that he used to work in a round bed. He was famous for working in his bedroom with a round bed. Moon, vest in cancer. I work, I work at home, I like to be at home in my No, I used to work in his palace and vest in cancer. I work in my home and in mansion. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also palace in cancer has to do with the daughter, he was intelligent, of course, because palace has to do with intelligence, but also he chose his daughter to be the CEO of the Playboy company for a period of time, CEO of the company. And well, then when she left to work in another area of his life, but he trusting her. It's that relationship with seals and palace that, that it was very, very clear and then we have the last junior aquarius in, in the fifth house well you can see he always was surrounded by women and he had a relationship most of the time with a partner not necessarily wives but he had a lot of women and i think that uh, he was famous for having three or five almost seven and being surrounded all the house full of bunnies and also full of playmates uh, but we can see that Juno, Juno was also experimented by him, not only because he was the, the seals guy. No, no, no. He also had problems in relationships because uh, what is said that he, that's his first wife, he had, she had a relationship. Uh, she she cheated on him uh, before getting married and he, she confessed that and she Allow to allow Hemi to have other relationships so they can be even. And the last wife, the one that is uh, here, she cancelled. Uh, she cancelled the wedding five days before the marriage, and then they reconcile after a year, and then they finally get married. So what I'm saying is that who know you know is also experienced by men. It's not that I am seals and I choose the woman to be like, you know, no, no, he has his junior self. He had a lot of problems, Juno and Jupiter together, huh? but in the fifth house. So there were much, many lovers rather than wives. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, I wanted to share this example, how this works with the male chart. So uh, I would like to go ahead. Is uh, I'm okay, Gay? Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, okay, That's good. Wonderful, wonderful. We can go ahead. Okay. We have another example, a very different one. Uh, uh, before going to those examples, is that asteroids? There are many ways to classify them. Okay, we can find names. Uh, names of famous people in many different fields, countries, cities, places, all those related to health, relationships, and many other uh, topics explored with you can be have fun with them and see how they are located and placed in our chart at very, very synchronistic. So we continue another example that has to do with the robot Sophia. This time I chose an example of a, an, a, a robot, not a human one. <laughs> not a human wow. one. Uh -huh. Not a human one. And well, we all, we all know what, what is, who is, who Sophia is. Sorry, I tried to not cover. Uh -huh. Sophia is the, this human and robot created by Hansel Robotic in, in Hong Kong. He was created uh, in around uh, 2015, something like that. But uh, finally, she was activated on uh, February the 14th in 2016. Mm -hmm. And one year later, she saw the United States. Not only uh, it was 
He was the first robot to become a citizen in the world. But not only that, because Sophia impressed us, uh, not only because of the intelligence, but also she was part of the cover of Cosmopolitan and many other uh, magazines. So let's see how this chart works and what asterisks I chose. So we can see here, uh, we can put it here. Uh, I just want to move ourselves here. We will go up and down, up and down. Okay. okay, so this is the chart when she was, when the robot was activated. Mm -hmm. And the transits around the chart has to do with the time that she was, uh, she became Saudi Arabian citizen. Mm -hmm. So is this the first time I, I cast a chart of a robot? Wow. <laughs> But it works. Maybe we can explore, but I like to, I prefer to use when she was activated. Uh, I have no time, but we can see in a, what is encircled, in an ellipse or circle, that she has the uh, asteroid Arabia in the 27th of Aries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the time that she was, uh, she became citizen, Uranus was passing over there. Wow. At the day, at the day that she became a citizen, in the, in the transiting moon was in conjunction with robot, the asteroid robot. Oh so a woman, a robot, and a woman. Wow. And not only that, it has to do with the country. So it was very, very uh, thrilling. There is an asteroid robot here. I didn't find any... I mean, I using conjunctions for this purpose, uh, only conjunctions no, for not to, to overwhelm the, the presentation. And, uh, and also Sophia, uh, the, there is an asteroid called Sophia, is in Pisces. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mentioned that because the following chart is about Saudi Arabia. This is the, the, the chart of the country Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia has in itself the asteroid Ar uh, Arabia with the South Node and the IC, which is exactly the moon of Sofia. Wow. Mm -hmm. At the time that I became citizen, uh, Neptune was making a conjunction over the asteroid Sofia of the country. Mm -hmm. So she was, she was activated, born uh, in the very first camp, has something to do with uh, Saudi Arabia. Yes, wonderful. And the second house, huh? <laughs> mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, many things. So there are many uh, synchronistic things uh, when we, you cast asteroids. If we don't cast them, we may not find any contact, but when you cast them, they can provide you little insights. It is like asteroids is the footnote of a text. Mm -hmm. When you use them properly, of course, you may find certain information that uh, can help you to understand other things or just to find the synchronicity. It, that's why I really like the most. Mm -hmm. So we continue with another example in mundane events. For example, uh, a couple of ones. In Japan, we all know what happened in, two, in 2011. I want to move us. Let's move us down. Okay. We, we know uh, well, this is the chart that I found from Pam. And we all know what happened in 2000, uh, 2011 about Ayan Fukushima. So, uh, I cast those uh, asteroids in the chart of Japan. And what really was amazing for me is the fact that Sendai Transit, Sendai, the, the, was, Sendai was the city that was covered by water. Sendai was in conjunction with the moon, but making a conjunction with natural Neptune. Wow, that's amazing. Yep, and Fukushima was in the sign of Aquarius. 
And what happened with Fukushima what was the plant, the nuclear plant. It was practically destroyed, and not only destroyed, but also uh, Fukushima had a problem with the uh, radiation waves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the following example as well is the earthquake in Mexico in 2017. This is the event chart when the earthquake started. We have Mexico, the asteroid Mexico, in conjunction with Pluto. But also, I chose the asteroid Richter. Richter is how we measure the magnitude of the asteroid, is that the scale. Well, the scale was very close to Uranus. <laughs> This particular date was very uh, special because in uh, this day, Mexico did a simulation of earthquake heating, which is uh, done every year. And the same day that they made this, the, the simulation, it happened a real earthquake. Wow, the same day, huh? The same day. I think it was a two hours span. Yeah. It's interesting. The same day, yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, I like to, to cast those asteroids and I found them, uh oh, of course there are many other transits that uh, allow to have an airway, but, but uh, when you go to the particular side of it, it's, it's very thrilling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, the last asteroid that I chose. I had an article of, of this asteroid photographica. Uh, I really enjoy because I work with uh, six photographers, some, uh, some of them political ones, some little ones, and I really enjoyed it because uh, it provides me a lot of information. I would like to share with you three of them, asteroid photographica. Well, of course, we have photographica somewhere in our chart, but if, if you are meant to be a photographer, this asteroid may be of interest. Okay, let's see. I chose the first example of, uh, this is a Peruvian photographer. Uh, this is a Peruvian photographer from ancient times, uh, whose name was Martin Chambi. No? Uh, he had asteroid photographica in Cancer and retrograde, okay, uh, and in, but in Cancer. And let's see about, let's see how he expressed himself about his work. I will read the, the quote, it said, it is said that Peruvian Indians have no culture, that they are barbarians. I have never believed that because I know my brothers in race as well as the people. But it seems to me that pictures speak more stronger than opinions, and thus I have taken on this task. So what I'm trying to highlight here is that his activity as photographer was focused on topics about cancer. It has to do with the country, has to do with the past, traditions, families, mm -hmm, and in black and white. Mm -hmm. And in black and most of the world, the world was black and white, of course, because the technology of that time was mm, not fully color. But most of his work, practically all of them, were in black and white, such to move. But he represented all what cancer means in his work. How was the chart? The chart uh, here when. Uh, he took a photograph of a giant. It was a, this is a Peruvian Indian that was a giant. He was two meters and ten, very very tall one. He discovered that. So and he is uh, Chambi here. So, so he make a comparison. This photo was taken and another one, and and it was published. And it was published in a, in Diario Variedades at that time that this photo was published. The asteroid photograph was very close to Mars and the midpoint of Mars and Saturn. Hmm? So he it was a, it is something about Mars, you no know, uh, impulse and Saturn his work. Mm -hmm. By the way, he has uh, Martin Chami has photograph as retrograde in the uh, practically to of cancer. 
Mm -hmm. And the day he died, I think uh, the day he died, he was, I think it was one of the photos previous to his death. When he died, Saturn was over photograph. Mm -hmm. I don't know what photograph here was uh, retrograde doing something else, but I can see the Saturn with some node very close to the, uh, to the asteroid photograph. Mm -hmm. A second Peruvian photograph, photographer, which is very known, is Mario Destino. Mario Destino, uh, he's a very well-known photographer. To have, he made photos for the royal family, top models. A totally different story. Peruvian as well, but a totally different story. He has asteroid photographica in Leo. Leo has to do with all these vibrant, glamorous things, all this glamorous life, etc. So he uh, he became famous doing such work with top models, actresses, actors, the royal family, and Isa was a, a it is a top photographer. What he said, he said, my eyes are my my photos are my eyes. I photograph what I want to see and what I what I want to see and what I want to see. So it is like I want. Mm -hmm. This I want. No? And really, he did it. He really did. So uh, we his chart. This is his chart, and he has a photograph in Leo, as we mentioned. No? And he became uh, also famous because uh, he took the last pictures of Lady D. And she died, she died, uh, she died in a car accident, uh, 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 like today, no? 30, uh, 31st of August. No? When uh, Lady D died, the moon was over photograph. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the asteroid photograph was in conjunction with Uranus and Jupiter. So he was very sad because, well, of course, it was a painful event, event but he, uh, Mario Testino was one of the last photographers of Lady D. So, uh, uh, and I think it was a week, uh, a week ago before she died when the photographs of Lady D were taken. Mm -hmm. huh? And the third one is Steve McCurry, also known a photographer. He has photographica in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. A different story. Let's let's read what he said. A picture can express a universal humanism, very Aquarian, uh, or simply reveal a delicate and poignant truth by exposing a slide of light that might otherwise pass unnoticed. Now he's very famous for a. Uh, traveling around the world with many taking pictures of other the, the cultures, but he had a special event with a famous Afghan girl. Mm -hmm. So we know uh, that he became famous with this photograph. Particularly uh, special uh, when she took the picture of this Afghan girl. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he has the asteroid photograph in Aquarius. The, when he, he took the picture of the Afghan girl, the photograph, the asteroid photographica was in conjunction with Mars. Mars, the war, uh, fighting a complicated uh, situation. And, but Mars is retrograde. So uh, it may mean that maybe he will come back. And he really did because after 17 years or more, uh, he decided to find this girl eh, and, and he really did. What happened? When uh, I put a uh, meet April because I don't have the exact date, well, I just referring April in, in April of that year. When, perfect. when he, uh, <laughs> this is perfect. Your, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and when he discovered, uh, when he was able to find the, the Afghan girl after many years, Urano was in conjunction with the asteroid photograph of Steve McCurry. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes it's thrilling because it's like they are not everywhere. It is like asteroids can peak among the 360 degrees, degrees. But no, they want to appear in a certain part of our chart, promoting something, giving some kind of energy. Sometimes we don't see them if we don't cast them. Mm -hmm. So just to make a conclusion, a recommendation is to, uh, if you want to work with the asteroids, select, select those ones that are related with uh, the topic you want to res research, because you cannot cast all of them. There are so many and you will get confused. Pick those that are interesting uh, for you to explore. You can use two degrees, three degrees maximum. Uh, for those asteroids that have some uh, mythology background, you can use the archetypes to make some interpretation. And for those that they don't have a particular meaning, but the photographica, for example, or Sophia, or you can, you have to add the meaning of the sign of the house and the aspect, of course, to, to make the connection and try to find the, the interpretation. Um, you can use asteroids in all kinds of charts, progress, return, uh, whatever you use. And of course, enjoy, enjoy and explore. There are many, many asteroids there, maybe providing information that we may not know. But what, what I really like the most of the asteroid is their synchronicity. They appear, they are working, they are providing information in a very tiny way. And they can provide us or add meaning to our work as astrologers. So enjoy. Wow. Resources. <laughs> and many thanks to all of you. Mm -hmm. Thanks to you. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I, I ad admire your curiosity, especially. How, yes. how do you think about the Richter asteroid, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you are wondering about this particular topic and then you are trying to find the asteroid, right? Is it how it works for you? Yes, it, it depends. Sometimes it is like they speak to me or they want to be discovered by me. Sometimes it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, it is like uh, when I want to research something, um, of course, I cast the chart with the planets. Of course, first the planets, then the asteroids. First yes. the planets will give you the, the, the name of the film, for so to speak, and the particular passages of the film will give you the asteroids. But I want, when I want to, to, to have some details uh, or particular views to narrow them down, I like to add asteroids. Wow. So, uh, for example, some decisions that I made for me for negotiation, for, core, for example, or uh, something that I need to have a much more particular information, I like to use the asteroid Anna, which is my name. Uh -huh. you know? And so I follow them when I, when I know when it becomes retrograde or changing the name. So I can feel the energy uh, or maybe, maybe doing some contacts. It will, it, it will provide the information that I need to work on or just to be careful. So it really, it, it is really helpful. And you can use them for many other topics, not only on your name, but uh, the partner's name, the name of a country, the name of a place. Uh, and just that, that's the, the, the good part. It sounds very strange to talk about Arabia retrograde or Sophia retrograde in conjunction in square to certain planets. It look, it, it sounds strange, but when you follow it, this piece of information, you may find uh, certain details that can help you to, uh, to find clues of what you need. In fact, uh, for example, in particular consultation about when will I move or uh, I want to rent something and I like to negotiate something, I try to cast the names of the person involved in the negotiation or uh, related to moving or house or whatever and try to track, track them and it really I found information that it otherwise could have been seen if I use only planets. Mm -hmm. wow. 
this is really cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, I know that you have many examples you did in your workshop too. And these examples were amazing, especially Sofia and the, uh, the latest photo, you know, the Afghan girl. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look at the first photos chart, but the latest one, you need to think about it to find the chart, when, when it was taken, etc. So I love your mind and your open-mindedness. It was wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks to you. Thanks for all the audience uh, that uh, uh, enjoy this presentation. It, it is uh, very curious about that. Uh, I think that the things happen uh, not only because planets allow that, but some asteroids may participate. So I have to find something and I'm very curious and would like to go beyond the, the, what is obvious. Yeah. Um, uh, and I am very curious because uh, all these examples are my, my creativity. Yeah. Um, and, and I like to explore and say, no, if it happens because some asteroid has to do something somewhere and somehow, <laughs> um, no, because we all may have the planets uh, uh, in some way or another, but the asteroid may work for you in a certain way, maybe for others not. You can see, for example, explore where the asteroid Anna in your chart is placed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 265 is a number. Uh, so, uh, and, I, and it's very, very interesting. No? For example, the asteroid Peru in my chart is in conjunction with my sun. Sun. Oh. Mm -hmm. And of course, in my in presentations, I always like to talk about many other international uh, international examples to choose. But I always like to talk about my country. You see, I talk about two uh -huh. Peruvian photographers, yeah. and in uh, and, and my presentation, I always I like to add Peru in the topic. It's like your essence, uh, yeah, your yeah, sun. Mm -hmm. And it, it works, it, 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 it's working for me at least. No? So it's, it's uh, very interesting to explore, to have a look at them, just only for fun, if you don't want to make a research on them. But uh, it, is, it is very interesting. Yeah. Of it's course, the most, known are, the most known are the big four, uh, related with the feminine wisdom. Uh, but I always uh, uh, but I say, no, you must be working with male charms of charts as well <laughs> and, and i really did with the hefner and i have other examples of male charts as well so it is a way, it's a way to contribute that this feminine sides feminine asteroids also also work works well with male charts yeah not the typical is no since you're male is the woman that you choose the woman that you select the woman that no, no it's not necessary is the feminine archetypes live it with me, inside of me, being a male. Mm -hmm. Wow. You are amazing. You have <laughs> wonderful you. ideas and creativity. I love that. Yeah, I love that. How can I say that? Personality of yours. So this was really <laughs> valuable uh, on many levels. I mean, new asteroids, new looking technique. It, you use like a horror too, as you said. So we mm -hmm. see many examples. I think this will be really mind opening for many people, astrology students, astrologers. So thank you uh, for your uh, valuable contribution. It's thank an you. honor to have you here and I'm looking forward to have you in more uh, works. In the oh, yes, I would love to participate, okay? uh, Gaia. So <laughs> be, be, feel free to call me anytime okay. that you need me. Yes. Mm -hmm. thank you. thanks thank you thanks thanks for this opportunity for 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 me to share with you what i like to explore uh, of course we can talk about many other topics beside this one so uh, astrology has many many things to discover to share so it's it's something that we can do frequently mm -hmm. yeah, i agree okay mm -hmm. wonderful you can reach anna uh, from her mail from her yes. Facebook. You have here in the screen my, my mail, astroanaandrade mm -hmm. at gmail.com. I used to have another one, but now I'm using this Gmail and in Facebook as Anna Andrade. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for watching us and see you in our next mini presentations. Thanks, mm -hmm. Anna. See you. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.